Well, autism spectrum disorder, or autism, is one of society's most common problems. Science has yet to thoroughly study autism. Both researchers and clinicians have not fully mastered diagnosing, understanding its causes, or even evaluating its effects on people. Despite the fact that autism is an ongoing studied illness, the knowledge available to researchers allow them to adjust and regulate its effects on an individual and reduce its manifestations when an individual reaches adulthood. Today we'll talk about autism spectrum disorder. Welcome to Autism Answers. We talk about autism with the goal of sharing knowledge and bringing awareness to light. Our goal is to make videos that are easy to understand so many will be able to understand and develop a deeper awareness of autism. With that said, we'll get into it. As we go through the course of our lives, we undergo specific changes at different ages. It is possible to track whether or not a child is developing at the correct pace by tracking changes known as developmental milestones. When these milestones are not reached, it may be indicative of a developmental disorder or genetic disorder. It has been noted that autism is one of the most prevalent childhood psychiatric disorders in terms of prevalence. According to Cooter, there's an estimated 2.1% of the population in the U.S. between the ages of 8 and 17 were affected by autism in some form or another. While autism manifests itself in a variety of ways, it's primarily characterized by the inability to communicate, lingual deficits, lack of sustained attention, low level of activity, temper tantrums, sleep disturbances, aggression, poor motor control, and other non-compliant behaviors. As a consequence of these behaviors, the individuals involved may find it difficult to succeed in their social and educational pursuits. However, note that it may be found difficult but not necessarily impossible. Autism spectrum disorder is a medical term used to describe problems that children and adults experience in terms of motor coordination, socialization, communication, verbal and nonverbal, and language acquisition as a result of their difficulties in these areas. During the research process, the authors have described autism as a neurological disorder that is caused by the brain's incapacity to perform certain functions in a normal way. While there is a close connection between autism and genetic, it is not entirely known why it affects lingual and communication skills. Studies have indicated that autism spectrum disorder, ASD, may be inherited from family members. According to a study conducted by the American Psychiatric Association, siblings are more likely to develop autism than other siblings. Has been claimed, however, that the difficulty experienced by scientists in pinpointing the genetic aspects of autism is due to the lack of extended family histories that can be traced back to the parents and other relatives. As a result, autistic individuals usually become more detached socially and are less likely to get married or have children in the future. Due to this, it's difficult to find a family that has detailed genetic info regarding autism that can be sourced. Fortunately, twins have proven to be a valuable tool for studying the genetics of autism in a more positive light. In a study, it was found that 82% of identical twins who are autistic are likely to have the same disorder as their sibling. Having said that, this is a contrast with a 10% likelihood that is implied by results from fraternal twins. In the recent past, more sophisticated studies have concluded that 90% of all autism-associated behavior phenotypes can be explained as a result of inherited genes as a result of genetic risk factors. As for an autism-related behavioral phenotypes are concerned, there's evidence to suggest that inherited genetic factors play a role in the development. The relationship between autism and genetics has proven to be very strong, which proves that heredity and autism are very closely linked. As far as biology is concerned, Finding the root cause of autism has been easy due to the relative inability to access and study the brain in a systematic way. It has been proven to study the structure and functionality of the brain thanks to technological advancements such as MRIs, CT scans, and SPECT scans. Due to these findings, specialists have been able to achieve a quite accurate understanding of how the majority of the brain structures play a critical role in the development of autism spectrum disorders. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, such regions include the cerebellum, cerebral cortex, limbic system, corpus callosum, ballus ganglia, and brain stem. According to other studies, there has been a strong correlation between autism and various neurotransmitters, including serotonin and epinephrine. We have various brain structures that are linked to ASD, such as the cerebral cortex, a thin layer of gray matter on the surface of the cerebral hemispheres. Two-thirds of its area is deep in the fissures or folds. It's also responsible for the higher mental functions, general movement, perception, and behavioral reactions. Now, before we continue, we'd like to ask for a few moments of your time. If you want to support Autism Answers and its mission to spread awareness about autism, please leave a like and click on the subscribe button. This would help us create more engaging content for you. Now, moving back to where we left off. A connection between the cerebellum hemisphere and the cerebellum is provided by the basal ganglia. The gray mass is located deep within the cerebellum hemisphere. It is helpful in regulating automatic movements. As well, we have the amygdala, which controls emotional responses, including aggressive behavior, information, and recent events are stored in the hippocampus. One of the major brain structures implicated in ASD is the corpus callosum. These bundles of fibers are primarily responsible for connecting the left and right hemispheres. This facilitates communication between the two hemispheres. 
In the back of the brain, there's a structure called the cerebellum. Motor activity, balance, body movements, coordination, and speech muscles are controlled by it. Last but not least is the brainstem. The brainstem is located in front of the cerebellum. Various parts of the body send messages to the cerebral cortex. Through it, serving as a relay station, here are located primitive functions, essential to survival such as the control of breathing and heart rate. The causes of autism spectrum disorder are unknown. As mentioned earlier, researchers have found that genetic, nutritional, and environmental factors play a pivotal role in the development of these disorders. Numerous studies indicate that genetic factors play a dominant role. Some have suggested that certain foods, infectious diseases, plastics, and metallic extracts may combine to autism. As well, smoking alcohol illicit drugs and some mercury-based childhood vaccines have been implicated in the development of autism. The causes of this condition are not conclusive, however, and further research is necessary. As a result, we understand that the theory of causation regarding autism is not fully developed as of today. Based on the results of the most recent CDC survey, autism rates have increased significantly over the past three decades. The majority of studies indicate that autism is more prevalent among children than any other age group. It's estimated that boys are four times more likely to be autistic than their female counterparts, as per Rudder research. Caretakers' ignorance and assumptions have facilitated the prevalence of autism disorder, says Rudder. Parents sometimes assume their children are slow and will develop as they grow. As autism is best treated when detected early, this approach has been costly. The delay makes it challenging for parents and individuals with autism disorder to find remedies and coping mechanisms. Atypical lingual patterns, communication difficulties, and repetitive behaviors are the main symptoms of this disorder. Medical or psychiatric assistance should be sought whenever these symptoms appear. Early diagnosis of ASD allows the individuals involved to devise effective interventions before it's too late. Children with ASD benefit from intensive interventions administered in a controlled environment during preschool for at least two years. The American Psychiatric Association, APA, recommends that parents ensure their children undergo developmental screenings during a well-child's checkup. In the early detection of ASD symptoms, screening plays a crucial role. A variety of screening instruments have been developed to facilitate diagnosis. The Social Communication Questionnaire SEQ and Screening Tool for Autism in Two-Year-Olds, STAT, has proven effective at diagnosing ASD in children over four years of age. As Freytag explains, ASD can't be treated in one way. Early interventions are imperative, according to experts in the field. A proper treatment should consider the interests of the patient, should enable the patient to learn in accordance with his or her abilities, and cause no harm to the overall well-being of the patient. To combat ASD symptoms, there are specialized programs and treatments. The most effective intervention for ASD is applied behavioral analysis. Additionally, dietary and medical interventions help suppress unwanted behaviors among autistic children. There are specialized educational programs for autistic students that aim to enhance their social communicational, cognitive, and language skills. Although autism cannot be cured, it can be managed so that the individual's future endeavors are not disrupted by it. And that's what we have for you today. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you want more content related to this topic, make sure to check out our channel. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.